Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're watching this video right now, I'm pretty confident that it's the Lord that prompted you to do that. Because you see, in the same way He prompted you to watch this, He prompted me to do this. I have absolutely no agenda. I have absolutely no script. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do love my King and I listen to His voice. And one morning He apprehended me as I was getting into the shower. I immediately sensed that I was in a garden. And it was so clear to me that I said, Lord, thank you for bringing me into this garden. And the Lord said, oh, beloved, I didn't bring you here. You brought me here. And in an instant, I was apprehended by the truth that God runs so quickly and so fast to the searching heart, the pursuing heart, the one that is looking for him. So in that same time, he said to me, would you do me a favor and would you teach my children how to access the garden that I want to build in their spirit? And I said, I would love to do that. So that's what these videos are about. And about six days before this lockdown happened, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me one morning and he said, Beloved, when the lockdown comes, I'm about to do one of the most extraordinary things on the earth I've ever done. And I said, Lord, I want to be a part of that. Whatever you're up to, I want to be right in the center of it. And so I began to ask questions. What is a lockdown? I've never even heard of that term before in my lifetime. And he said, I'm going to draw my sons back to me. I'm going to woo them back to me. I'm going to reconcile hearts back to me. I'm going to reconcile marriages. I'm going to heal broken relationships. I'm going to pour out my spirit on broken hearts. I'm going to meet my children. I'm going to become more real to them than I ever have. And I began to get a thirst and a hunger that just built up in me. And I said, Lord, I want to be right in the center of this. So don't you find it interesting that in the midst of all this chaos, all of the fear and anxiousness and worry that is just the frequency across the land, across the entire earth, the Lord is doing something so incredibly divine. And He's summoning you. That's why, if you're watching this video, it's not by accident nor coincidence. He invited you. He prompted you and He's waiting for you. So a little bit of context for this. It's really hard to commune with someone that you cannot see. And Jesus gives an explanation for this in the third chapter of John, where he's having this remarkable conversation with Nicodemus. And he explains the difference between what is flesh is flesh, and how the flesh gives birth to the natural, but what is spirit is spirit, and how the spirit gives birth to the supernatural. And then in the very next chapter of John, he has this beautiful conversation with this woman at the well. And there's a phrase in there that I want you to hear. This is the key to this entire chapter. So let me read from the fourth chapter of John from a Passion Translation. From here on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit, and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. So, if God is a spirit, this could be the very reason why we've tried so hard to connect with our creator, with our natural minds, and it's not working. Because we have to connect with him with our spirit. So hopefully this is intriguing you because this is what these videos is about. How to access your spirit, how to hear his voice, and how to encounter the Lord God Almighty who loves you so deeply. We have three parts to our being. There's a context for this in Hebrews 4, 12, I believe is the verse where it says that the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it has the power to pierce down to the core of our being, where bone and marrow meet, 
and soul and spirit are divided. So we see that we have bone and marrow, which is our body. We have a soul and we have a spirit. The soul is where our endemic nature is, our carnal mind, our struggles, our emotions. All those things that are soulish, that are not of God, are the very thing that keep us from encountering Him and keep our spirits tethered to the earth. So I have found that taking the blood of Jesus and washing out those areas of our soul opens up and clears the pathway for our spirit to begin to see. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that first. So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to repeat after me. And let's start right back at the beginning by just rededicating our lives to Jesus. So repeat after me and I'll give you time for that. Lord, I believe you are the Christ. You are the Son of the Most High. And I believe that you died on the cross for me. And the blood that you shed was enough to cover every single one of my sins and my mistakes and my transgressions and my iniquities. So I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my thoughts. I wash out my mind of all the things that are possible distractions, of every form of doubt and unbelief, of every mindset of religious thinking that might be holding me back from encountering you. And I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my conscience of every mistake I've ever made. You already know them. I wash out shame. I wash out the way that I've seen myself that perhaps is an unholy picture of who I am. And I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my reasoning. And I confess to you, Lord, that many times a miracle has happened and I have witnessed it. But I have reasoned it away or called it uh, coincidence. I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my imagination. And I confess and repent for any way in which I anchored my belief system on something that I actually created in my imagination that wasn't even real because I became fearful or anxious. I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my will. Untether me from all the things in me that cause me to stay where I'm at. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to soar with you. And I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my choices and my decisions. And I take the blood of Jesus and I wash out my emotions and my desires of all the anxiousness, of all fear, chaos and confusion, unrest, and any unbelief and doubt that might be sitting there. Now that you've done that, you've taken the blood of Jesus, which is really, really powerful. Your imagination has now been sanctified. So keep your eyes closed. And on the screen of your imagination, I want you to see the front door of your house. And we're going to take him at his word, because the word of God says in Revelation chapter 3, I stand at the door and I knock, and those who hear my knock, I will open the door and I will come in and dine with them. Jesus says in John 10, 9, I am the gate. I am the door. He who comes through me can come in and go out and find green pasture as he pleases. So when we open this door, we're not going to step into your living room but we're going to step into a sanctified imagination where you are framing up right now a beautiful garden in your mind that's going to be on the other side of that door when you open the door. On the count of three, we're going to open that door. But I want you to believe right now that you can see a garden if you choose to see the garden. One, two, three. Open the door and look for grass. 
Look for a ground cover. Look for color. Look for your favorite flowers. You're going to begin to see it right away. He wants to build this garden in you so that you begin to run to this place in your spirit. It will become your favorite place to pray. It will become your refuge. And my purpose in doing this for you is to just take you here and set you up so that you can encounter and commune with the King. I want you to notice that there's a brilliant bright light right behind you. And you know it's the King because you know his fragrance. And you know his voice because he promises that his sheep know his voice. And you feel a light touch on your left shoulder, and that's his hand. And you take your right hand and you place it on your left shoulder. And you know that you know that you know. He has just met you in the garden of your spirit. And as you turn your head to the left, you can see that the light is so brilliant. It's hard to see because he's so brilliant. And you hear him whisper your name. Enjoy. This is what this series is all about. Don't stop. Stay right here. Stay with him. Let him speak to you and let him redefine you.